I shouldn't talk about emus. It's a flightless bird. Welcome to the Chris Baxter Show. This is our championship round show. Uh, by the way, we went 4-0. I went 4-0 last weekend. Uh, many of you uh, doubted the 49ers and the Giants. I did not. But uh, we'll get the show rolling. We've got Andy here. Uh, Andy hats up, of course, from uh, Fisk, Wisconsin. And, um, yeah. Welcome back to the show, Andy. Hey, mira quien llegó. El que no era nada. Y ahora lo es todo. Aquí fue cool. ¿Quién soy yo? No soy el mejor ni el primero. Yes, I am Mexican. It's very... ¿Quién soy yo? Hey, Chris, take it. Well, Mr. Baxter, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Kool-Aid, the drink of champions and diabetics across the United States. <laughs> All right, we'd also like to welcome back to the show uh, the Coal Train, Stone Coal, uh, Katie. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> no. Welcome to the show, Cole. Come on in. <laughs> Please don't break things in my office. I'm not doing oh, that. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, big dude love fan. I know that. I know that, Cole. Big dude love fan. Absolutely not. Yep. Absolutely. Um. Well. Games last weekend were very, very good, uh, except for the uh, Broncos-Pats game. So we'll start off with that and get the, the hell out of the way. <sighs> Brady throws five touchdowns in the first half, absolutely smokes Tebow. We find out later that Tebow had an injury in the third quarter to his ribs. Uh, sounds to me like excuse-making time. Uh, I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? Uh, from the report I read, he had... He bruised lung. He had fill up, or fluid building up in his chest, and he had torn <laughs> cartilage in his ribs. But saying that, he's just being a big vagina face. Yeah, the injury happened in the third quarter. He was already getting Sucking his ass up. whooped Sucking terribly. Cole, you're a big Tebow supporter. You're in tape. Not anymore. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad we've converted you to the dark side. <clears throat> that being him being... Alex Smith fan? Uh, I am an Alex Smith fan. I am an Alex Smith fan, but we'll get to that later. Broncos offseason. The uh, uh, Broncos and John Elway have named Tim Tebow the starter going into training camp. Uh, fans are still upset about this because they think he should be named the starter for the season. I don't, I don't understand that argument. You want your best guy playing quarterback, so if Tebow plays terrible in training camp and another guy outplays him, wouldn't you want your best guy playing quarterback? Uh... That's a very correct statement. Makes sense. It, it does. I mean, they they lost yeah. four out of their last five games, you know, with Tebow at the starter. Yes, he got them in the postseason. Yes, he got them a postseason victory. That being said, his rushing yards per game went down drastically in those last five games. And the only game he won was when he was passing the ball against the Steelers. So I don't I don't understand the argument there. They've also got a couple other uh, situations. Brian Dawkins is probably going to retire. Champ Bailey's getting a little older, although he's still a phenomenal player. Mm, no Sean Marino. He's not a block to make it. And Willis McGahee's getting older, so they're going to have to probably beef up that running attack, maybe with a guy like Michael Bush, who's going to be a free agent from the Raiders, or maybe they can address it in the draft. Any thoughts on their offseason moves? Uh, I like the point about Michael Bush. I could really see him being a Bronco next season. It, the system would fit him very well. I also think that Mike Goodson or Jonathan Stewart or D'Angelo Williams out of Carolina, I think one of those backs is getting not traded or released. It's a high salary there. and uh, I could see Jonathan Stewart being there for sure getting traded because, I mean, they have Cam Newton who can run the ball just as good right. as Jonathan Stewart. And right. They have D'Angelo Williams. And Mike Goodson's him. younger than both those guys. So oh, very true. I could see Jonathan Stewart ending up in, in Denver just because of his past experience with John Fox's running game. I agree with that. Okay. <laughs> uh, moving on to the other AFC showdown, the Texans-Ravens defensive battle. Uh, looks like the Ravens are going to blow this one out of the water, but uh, a couple of failed fourth down 
conversions made the game closer than it needed to be. Obviously, TJ Yates played like a rookie. I mean, he made some nice throws. He got him down there. Um, and some, the, some mistakes. Yeah, he had some mistakes. I think it was kind of the game you would expect. But uh, I think the Texans are left to wonder what if. I mean, if they had a healthy Matt Schaub and Mario Williams, and that defense was a top five unit as is. But with Matt Schaub playing, that game would have been completely different and maybe we'd be seeing the Texans playing this weekend instead. I think, in my opinion, they would be. I don't know if you guys have any disagreements there. Uh, if they had more consistent quarterback play, they... They the might have had game, a bye. Yeah, well, the running game beat up the Ravens. I mean, Arian Foster he had over looks like he yards. is one of the top backs in the NFL, if not the top back right now. Yeah, with Adrian Peterson going down for an, with an injury, I think there's a very strong argument you can make with you know Foster being the best back in the league. And I was not a believer because, to, for me, Texans backs, they have one good year and they disappear. You know, Steve Slayton, uh, Ron Dane even had a good year there. Uh, but it's like... It, Dominique Williams? Dominique Rhodes? No, Dominique, Dominique Williams. Dominique Williams. Anyways, Texans backs, it's usually one year and then the next guy. And then Ben Tate started off strong, so then I thought this year was going to be Ben Tate, but they actually complemented each other very well. But uh, obviously in the offseason, they're going to get Shaw back. It'll be interesting to see if TJ Yates goes in next year as the backup or if there's some form of competition. Because although Shaw is great, he does have games where sometimes he's, he kind of reminds me of Flacco of quite a bit, where you always expect the guy to do a little bit more. But, uh, you know, they're going to probably look at a receiver in the offseason. Other than that, Wade Phillips is sticking around. That defense is stiff. So mm. I could see maybe them looking into getting maybe another corner across from Jonathan Joseph. I mean, their corners played well this year, but if you can get another top corner there, they could just, they'd be a shutdown oh, defense. Diabetes. Good. I agree. I agree. Um, now we're going to move on to this week's games. Uh, Pats Ravens. Going to be a very, very good game in my opinion. Um, you know, you got both the teams that had the buys. That's the way it should be. Not the way it always is, as we'll get to later, but uh, you, you got really good defense, a really good offense, uh, a suspect defense, and a suspect offense. Something has to give there. How do you see this one playing out, Andy? Uh, I'm going to give it to the Patriots. I They have more guys who have been to the playoffs. Tom Brady looks playing like a man possessed right now, and I honestly think they can do some damage against this Ravens defense. I would, I would agree to a certain extent in that I do expect the offense to put up pretty good numbers. However, they're not going to put up the same numbers they put up against the Broncos. No, I mean, I, even with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed being older, they're still a top. You know, it's 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 one of the best defenses in the league. And not a defense that any quarterback thinks they're going to have a cakewalk going up against. But you do make a good point about Brady playing a command possessed. He hasn't won. He had, Up until last week, he hadn't won a playoff game uh, since the 07 season. Uh, when they lost to the Giants in the Super Bowl, the 18 and one record, uh, but uh, it looks like he's back. He knows that teams, you know, and himself is getting older. He's been missing a lot of practices lately with his shoulder injury, and it's only a matter of time before Brady starts breaking down. And sure, surely he has to realize that. Belichick has to realize that. They've got a couple years left with a window, and I think next year they'll be an even better team, uh, because they'll be able to shore up that defense. But this year, they do have a really good opportunity if you look at the four teams that are left. I'm not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl, but I think they have a, a good opportunity to do so. Cole, any thoughts on this game? I like the Ravens. Um, I just really can't stay in the Patriots. I would like to see them lose. And the Ravens have an awesome defense. The Patriots will have a hard time stopping Ray Rice. He's going to put up numbers. And, th and that's true. I mean, <coughs> Ray Rice... You know, if they can if they can play ball control offense, the Ravens have a shot in this game. Keep the ball away from Tom Brady. I think the big question is, you know, can Joe Flacco keep up with Tom Brady? And, he, and I guess not necessarily keep up with him in the sense that he needs to throw for 400 yards and five touchdowns, but he has to be able to go drive for drive. Yes, the defense can pick up some slack, get a turnover here and there, but you can't count on Brady throwing interceptions. Uh... uh <coughs> We've seen Flacco at times this year pull off very clutch fourth quarter drives. And then last weekend, you know, with the playoffs on the line, in the second half, Flacco didn't even show up. He he didn't look like a starting quarterback in the NFL. I mean, 
games this year, he looked like he was he's definitely like almost elite status. Then other games this year, he looks he plays down to the level of his competition. And that Patriots defense over the last couple weeks has been playing surprisingly well. It's it's improved. I wouldn't say surprisingly well, but surprisingly well for for the talent they have. Yes, yeah. I can agree with that. Uh, another you know interesting storyline going into this game is is this Ray Lewis's last game. Uh, he has talked before about retiring. He's kind of gone back on that, but you know maybe a depressing loss. You know might send him into retirement. He may be getting frustrated. You know with the offense if he doesn't see Flacco take leaps and bounds. I personally think Ray Lewis will stick it out for one more year, whether or not they win a championship. Uh, I think he likes the guys, and you know once you hang it up, you can't, there's no coming back. You know we saw it with Brett Favre how hard it is to actually leave this game, and Ray Lewis has been a force in this league for well over a decade. Uh, New England has called the Ravens their toughest opponent they'll play this year. I think the Giants would probably have something to say about that because the Giants actually beat New England earlier this year. And it'll be interesting to see if the Patriots play the Giants in the Super Bowl if the Giants have, uh, uh, I guess, choice words for Brady at that time. I remember in the Super Bowl in 07, uh, the, uh, one of the Giants players picked the Giants to win the Super Bowl 21 to 17 or 24 to 21, and Tom Brady laughed and said, "What? We're only going to put up that many points?" Well, they only ended up scoring 14. So, you know, Brady has a, a kind of a track record of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, and that's confidence. But sometimes it can be confused with arrogance. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back to the uh, NFC games. Uh, I suppose I should make my pick for that. I'm, I'm going with the Patriots. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Ravens win, but I'm going to go with the Patriots uh, with a final score of like mm, 31 to 17. Mm. Okay, that works for me. Just made it up off the top of my head. Well, I'm going to get some more Kool-Aid. We'll come back to the NFC picks. And uh, all right. <laughs> 